Hey guys, today we're going to do an unboxing of the Poulon backpack leaf blower. <clears throat> this one is uh, 220 miles per hour, 490 cubic foot a minute. Uh, normally sells at Lowe's for about 221. This is the second highest model they sell. They have another one uh, by Husqvarna, which is 299. That's 250 miles per hour at 800 CFM or 600 CFM or some nonsense, but that's way more than I need to blow off stuff off of roofs for roof cleaning and usually driveways to blow off all the dirt and gravel and that kind of stuff before we surface clean. So let's open up the box. I've already done the tape. This is a two stroke 46 uh, cc motor in here so you have to add oil to your gas. And I'll be right back. Top tray has all of the the arm attachments and some instructions are down here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm doing this with one hand. So let me take that out and then I'll be right back. After you get the tray out, you can see the backpack unit here. So we will pull this out. It's supposed to have a little can of oil. That oil might be down here. There's the instructions. Might be stuck in there somewhere. But I did stop and buy myself a gallon of gas so I could put the two stroke oil in it. So let's get this out and have a better look at it. Here we are out of the box. You can see it's a nice little backpack unit. Gas fill, pull start, choke lever. Should be a priming bulb around here somewhere, which I'm half blind, but I'll find it. Anywho, spark plug on top. Nice padded uh, shoulder straps, adjustable. Inside this tube, that's the throttle control. Uh, this is the parts that connect to here, that connect to that, that and your throttle control, so that's good. And there's the oil that they hid inside of this little flex hose. And then of course it has a spark plug wrench with a screwdriver on the end to make little adjustments. Adding this piece is fairly easy. You just basically slip it on to this swivel elbow. It has connections that look like that, kind of like your hose barbs. Then you use the attached screwdriver to tighten that hose clamp up. You don't have to over tighten it. It's not a water seal. So on this part, we'll do the same thing. We'll install it. Now take note, when you go to put the handle on, there's a little knob right here. So we're not going to tighten up that thing yet because what's going to happen is this is going to have to go this way. You see that little groove up there? I don't know if you can see it right under the handle. That groove has to go this way to slide over this little knob and then once you get it on there there's a ridge here where is it there it is that that will then line up on so this little knob once again slides over that little knob down there and then lines up on that ridge there's a thumb screw down here so loosen that up before trying to put it on and then we'll just tighten this up <clears throat> like you did the other one and that'll all be together so here you can see we've already connected them. It takes about two seconds. I have left this loose for right at the moment. I've also left the thumb screw on the other side of this loose. So once I wear it, I can turn this and adjust it this way, that way, and this way, whichever way I, you know, to fit me comfortably. And then I'll tighten it all up. But you know, this is a swivel and this does move, so it's not a huge adjustment. And that'll control your throttle for your for your backpack and then the last two pieces are these and if you notice all they have is this little knob like the front one had that'll slide into this channel right here okay and then once you slide it in you'll just twist it and I guess that little screw right there all of them have that you can tighten those up and fit a little screw here at the bottom okay I just wanted to point these out when you put these turn sections you see where that screw is by my thumb the screw on the other section that actually screws in is above that knob because when you slide this down, okay, you're going to then turn it clockwise and that'll line up the screw where that hole was. So I can't do this with one hand. So this screw goes over the knob on the right and then you'll turn it clockwise and that screw will line, now line up with that hole that was down there 
under my thumb. All right, once you have it properly aligned, you take the tool they gave you and you just snug down this screw like that. Same with the other one up there at the top. You don't have to snug it down far. And the oil ratio to gas is 50 to 1, so the little bottle of oil they give you goes to one gallon of gas. I'll dump this in there. I'll shake it up. Before using gas, every time you fill up, take a gas tank. Make sure you shake it up real good like that. You know, oil and stuff tends to separate a little bit. And I always use a funnel. I carry one of these on the truck, you know, for every machine I fill up. Nothing kills grass and plants faster than gasoline. It's better than, than uh, what do you call it, Roundup. And not to mention, you'll smell bad if it gets all over and it's just nasty. Okay, a couple things I do with all my gas machines is one, I always use the 98 or whatever it is, high test without ethanol. Um, that's a personal choice. Even if you know I did use ethanol, I'd always use a 98 anyway. So whether you use ethanol or not, that's up to you. But I prefer not to use it. I also never fill my tanks all the way. This is about halfway. I got a big driveway to blow off tomorrow. Uh, that's why I got this particular model because my handheld one would take a little while longer. The reason I say that is when I'm done with that, I don't like to let gas sit in any of my machines. You know, I try to use gas all the way to the end and I'll actually let the machine run. If I'm going to store it for a while, if I don't have a job coming up for a while for that machine, then I'll actually run that machine until the gas runs out. And I've been doing that for years and years and years and years and, you know, it just saves me from, you know, gas gunking up and carb problems and, you know, I'm not saying it's 100% foolproof, but it works for me, so... You know, if you got the extra couple minutes a day to do it, that's great. Do it. But we're going to fire this up, and I'll let you hear how it sounds. But basically, you have a choke lever up here. I still haven't read the manual to find out where the primer bulb is. It's got to be around here somewhere. I think that's it down there. No, there it is. Way down there. So, nope, that's not it. Where, oh, where is my primer bulb? Oh, they hit it on me. I know it's there somewhere. Must be blind. I am going old, you know. So, we're going to get ready to start this up. I'm going to show you some of the controls here. Basically, you have a choke. Uh, once you get going, it's in the up position. When you get going, it's in the run position. The primer bulb, you got to press about 10 times. It's way back here they hit it, so you got to stick your finger up there. Can you see that? Way up there and stick your finger up there and prime that. You also got to come over here. This is the uh, like on-off ignition button, so that's off, that's run. And then if you look at this yellow switch here, as you move that a little bit, that'll move your trigger so you can put it a little bit in. So you have a little bit of gas, then you set it on the floor, then you crank it up. I just wanted to point something out before I start this up. I did a double check. I had to take this section off because I realized this cable, I had twisted that a little bit, and this cable was over here coming from underneath. So the correct position for this is on this side. And then this little clamp here, this little clamp here will clamp on somewhere around here. I gotta figure it out to hold that cable kind of in place because that's so you can move it around. If I would have left it on the other side like that, it's a possibility it could have kinked up or pinched or something like that. And we have it on the ground. We're ready to crank it up. And old Thor over there is not going to be happy about this.
So there you have it. I've adjusted everything. Uh, after I was blowing the muddy stuff around, I wish that it was not raining so you could have seen how it did on, you know, pebbles and dry sand and dry leaves. But everything here is adjusted. I tightened it all up in that final clip that I was talking about. There's a little groove right here that holds this cable to this side. So there you have it. You can look on my description. I'll have a link where you can buy one of these, probably through my Amazon page. Uh, won't cost you any more or you can possibly get it at Lowe's at a discount or whatnot or on some other line on sale. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer it as soon as I can or maybe one of my subs will. But remember, please hit that subscribe button that's going to pop up and YouTube is going to put more videos for you to watch over here. So enjoy yourself, grab the popcorn, and just remember, we really appreciate you being part of our family and subscribing to our channel. All the support you give us has been wonderful. So have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.